For as long as he could remember, that's how life was. The Great Spirit had blessed it with immense mountains filled with game. and the secrets of power and life. With abundant streams that brought richness to the land. And the greatest blessing of all, the endless plains thick with buffalo the very source of life itself. These things bespoke of the goodness of the Great Spirit and of the perfect balance between man and his world. And in that distant age, Time seemed to float past with the ease of an eagle caressing the sky. But for Cheum, the days held only transient pleasure. For indeed, the full meaning of life lay in being a man, not a boy. Cheum endeavored to make each day's activity a stepping stone to manhood. He had sharpened his senses and his skill with his weapons, for these were the tools a man needed to survive. Cheum's family sensed his yearning. They knew how he longed to join the older men on a vast buffalo hunt and return to the lodge with rich meat and hides instead of a skimpy rabbit. <laughs> How proud his grandfather would be of him then. Even prouder than when he had shot the fat buck, whose hide lay stretched out for drying. Yes, Cheum yearned to taste the bittersweet of manhood, to join the warriors on their raids across the plains and strike a blow at the enemy and return with his best horses even now, somewhere beyond that distant horizon, his uncle was on one of those raids. How he longed to be with him. But like all youths of that distant time, Cheu knew that to enter manhood he must prepare himself spiritually. He must obtain a supernatural helper, a living manifestation of the power that would be the foundation of his faith. This was the proper way would always be the proper way. This was why the family moved away from camp, to bring Cheum closer to the great mountain, the sacred place, the source of great power. Great Spirit showed kindness to his people. Cheum's uncle, Kalauken, has safely returned from the enemy and with honor. These were moments filled with excitement for Cheum. A first-hand account of the battle, the honor and glory of combat, the brave and daring deeds of men. 
Kalao Ken spoke of the dark moments as the enemy surrounded him and death seemed so close at hand. But his faith was strong, for he had taken care to perform the proper ritual taught him by his spiritual helper. And on the strength of this medicine, he was delivered safely and triumphantly from the enemy's hands. The happiness of this moment must be attended by thanksgiving. And so a prayer was offered for the goodness of the Great Spirit. But for Cheyum, prayers were difficult to feel when a new experience awaited. Now more than ever, he sensed the solemnity of his impending adventure. and all its children seem to be waiting, pausing in earthly reverence for the magnitude of these moments. Conditions were good. With tomorrow's dawn, Cheum would set forth on his quest, would climb high into the sacred place of the great mountain, there to fast and pray that his source of power would be revealed. But there is much preparation. the sacred object, the hallowed symbol of each man's spiritual strength. You will have one too, Cheum, when you return. The precious and powerful talisman will be left you by your guardian. You will keep it always with you, lest you forget the great power your helper has given you. At the sacred spot of the mountain, you will fast and pray for four days. Within this time, a vision will appear to you. When it comes, you will be frightened, for it will appear as an animal. But take heart, it will change to a man. He will teach you a sacred song and tell you what to do to possess power. Remember these things. Through them, you will have strength and courage when all else fails. For Cheum, the day was painfully long, the preparation endless but all things must be right. The body must be cleansed and the soul purified. The ritual of sweating for purification was familiar to Cheum. He had done it many times in his young life. Now it bore special meaning. Now he must be completely free of all weakness of body and spirit. Songs of supplication were offered to the Great Spirit, beseeching him to pity Cheum, to carry him safely through the dangers that might beset his way. Into the icy stream they brought their steaming bodies, closing the pores and expelling all defilement of body and soul.
Cheum was ready for his quest. In all his 14 summers, he could not remember such a morning. The sun shone with such clarity and power. The sky seemed so infinite, the clouds so pure. The gentle world was awakening, and all the forces of earth and sky were in harmony. Surely the signs were good. The climb to the great mountain would be long and strenuous for Cheum, but his grandfather and uncle were along to give him strength of spirit and lead him safely to the sacred place. Their medicine was powerful and enduring, for each had received his guardian spirit in his youth. This was the sacred place, desolate, foreboding, frightening, isolated from a friendly world, shrouded with immense unearthly power.
At this sacred spot, Cheum must remain alone until his guardian spirit appears. Success of the quest lay in the knowing preparation of one wise in the ways of the great spirit. Final purification was needed. The cleansing smoke of burning sweetgrass would purge away the last vestiges of impurity. And so was it done. The elders must depart. As he watched them go, never looking back, Cheum wondered what unearthly experiences would beset him ere he saw them again. Night brought a deathly chill to Cheum's body, a chill whose icy fingers seemed to reach deep inside and close around his soul. Was he being watched? Would his spirit appear now? If so, he was quite ready. Clearly it was day, and yet the sun had never appeared so strange. Indeed, it was closer, hovering right over Cheom, its fiery tentacles reaching down to singe him. There had been no vision during that long and sleepless night. Perhaps it would come during daylight. Cheum knew the dreadful shame that would befall a young man who failed to remain and fast for four days and nights. Indeed, the spirit must come, lest he perish from hunger and thirst. His tired eyes searched for a sign. Somewhere in that distant age, the forces of earth and sky were out of harmony and cast despair over the heart of a youth in search of life's most cherished gift. He would suffer the shame of failure rather than the agony of famine. mind, the message was unmistakably clear. Surely it was a warning, a portent of his vision. At the lodge, life's duties went on as usual. but silent prayers were said. A thoughtful vigil kept.
You have sought me, and I have sought you. Do not be afraid. I am your guardian spirit. Do as I tell you, and I will be your partner in manhood. Whenever you cross water, see the underwater people. Never taste the meat of the grizzly bear. Learn my song. It has great power. Hey, hey, hey. I give you my claw as I leave you. In it is my power. It will be your sacred helper. And in this way did the Great Spirit bless his children with the reassurance of a guiding power to strengthen their way through life. As a man, he'll need new clothes and new weapons for the proud warrior. And thus did these people find the faith to guide their destinies, a faith founded on their own culture, their own genius, and their own capacity to understand the meaning of life. Cheyum was a man, not in years, but in spirit. He was ready to taste the adventures of manhood, knowing that his faith would carry him through each tomorrow with growing strength. Cheyum's tomorrows are now forgotten yesterdays. His life passed from the land gently and unheeded. 
But the earth and sky that were his world remain unchanged. And the great mountain still stands, frozen against the sky, a guardian of the past, silently recalling that time so long ago when a boy became a man.